So what you're saying is we got two weeks between episodes here? That gives me plenty of time! Oh, man, I should totally do my own animated episode! Oh, no, trust me, guys, I got, like, you know, like, Photoshop, and I've got, like, pens and markers. I can totally do this, guys. I mean, seriously, what can go wrong? 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 This just in, Pinkie Pie has eaten herself. Apparently, she tastes just like cotton candy and proved this by consuming herself and disappearing into nothingness after one very large bite. Pinkie Pie has since reappeared in Ponyville, claiming to have achieved all consciousness and an understanding of the meaning of existence and that she now tastes like bubblegum. I'm Joe Stevens, and this is the Equestria Inquirer. Just stop. Good evening, po- that ah, one more time. <clears throat> Good evening, Ponyville. Our top story. Rainbow Dash has dazzled the scientific community once again. No, I'm not referring to her ability to drop radioactive ooze off her wings as exhaust from subsonic flight. Those rainbow streaks have caused mutations in several turtles and a melodramatic rat and are extremely dangerous. I'm actually referring to Rainbow Dash breaking the speed of light. Recently, Rainbow Dash snuck inside the National Equestrian Radioactive Dynamics Syndicate, or NERDS, laboratory. There, she entered the large horse-drawn collider and proceeded to rocket herself in a circle as fast as she could fly. Technically speaking, Rainbow Dash did not break the speed of light. Pinkie Pie just appeared inside the large horse-drawn collider after once again eating herself. The resulting explosion between Rainbow Dash, Sonic Rain booming into Pinkie Pie formed a singularity and caused a black hole to come into an existence. This wormhole in reality transported both ponies to Chicago, Illinois, faster than the speed of light. Will they come back? Who knows? But Pinkie Pie is adamant about finding a tofu hot dog and seeing a Cubs game. Continuing our coverage of Applejack's fritter addiction is Techrat. Techrat, what's your take on this story? Thanks, Joe. We have been told that Applejack has been admitted to the Betty Full Clinic for an apple fritter addiction. Unreliable sources have confirmed that Big Macintosh discovered Applejack, was sneaking into the family's apple stores at night and carrying baskets of apples down into a secret root cellar where she had set up a makeshift fritter lab. He said she was baking and eating fritters by the dozens and relishing the dizzying sugar high that followed. Upon confronting her, Applejack became belligerent, screaming, I can quit any time I want, before grabbing a hoof full of fritters and storming out. Granny Smith noted that Applejack's love of fritters started when she was just a toddler. Applejack would sneak a plate of them beneath a table at their family reunions and gorge herself, asking any pony who saw her for more apple fritter. If those ponies weren't struck down by acuteness-induced heart attack, they would usually comply, contributing further to the young filly's frightening pastry obsession. After discovering her vice, the Apple family, along with Applejack's friends, staged a fritter intervention. Pinkie Pie apologized for being an enabler by providing bags of flour and sugar from Sugar Cube Corner. Rarity pointed out to Applejack that quitting the fritters would do wonders for her complexion. Apple Bloom simply pleaded with her big sister to put down the pastries and seek help. After a tense moment where Applejack threatened to eat a stack of fritters she had concealed under her hat, she surrendered the desserts and agreed to a three-week session at the clinic. She has since been enduring pastry detox as the sugars and syrups leave her system. Her attending nurse has commented that she is doing well, although she will still occasionally ask passerby for more apple fritter, which earns her surprise meds and a stay in the quiet room. Back to you, Joe. No, Plank, you can't have an apple fritter. You're already painfully addicted to moon pies, and I'm not calling Luna again to get you another fix. Very interesting, Techrat, thank you. Truthy, what news from the Orbital Truth Cannon?
Thank you, Truthy. Your wisdom and wit are essential to this program. In other news, Rarity doesn't taste like a marshmallow. She tastes like cottage cheese. At least that's what Applejack said. Not sure why she knows this, but I'm sure it had nothing to do with her wanting to make s'mores at their most recent camping trip. I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been the Equestrian Inquirer. Good night, and good luck. Large horse-drawn collider.